Hi, I'm Rory. I'm a member of the Craigavon and Banbridge Mental Health Forum. Come with me. We are going to meet some of my friends from the other service user and care forums in the Southern Trust and share with you their experiences of recovery. Caroline, how's you? All right, Rory. Doing well, how about you? I'm not too bad, Caroline. See, you took up cycling. I have indeed, Caroline, and it's been the stepping stone to my recovery. Same as the yoga with me. Right. The exercise is brilliant. When did your recovery begin? Hi, Caroline, and I'm just going to tell you a bit of uh, my recovery story. My mental health problem started in my early 20s. But they escalated when my dad died in 91 with uh, severe anxiety and uh, panic attacks and they became part of my everyday life. Uh, so much so that I had to leave my job of 11 years and this was hard to lead with as well. I relied very heavily on my mum. I had a baby then. Problems escalated and mum became the child's mother really. The first few months, disaster struck for me my mum died. I was left in a bit of a mess but at the same time it gave me an encouragement. I really had to pick myself up somehow or other and keep going for the child. And eventually I got persuaded to go to Action Mental Health and realised it wasn't on my own. It was an eye-opener. Um, so many people with mental health problems. At this time I, I joined the Craig and Bambridge forums and met a lot of new people there. This gave me the confidence uh, to go on and do numerous other courses, the highlight of which was going to Southern Regional College on my own at night and uh, I done my GCSE maths and passed it which was just absolutely brilliant for me at the time. I then considered a voluntary placement uh, with Adapt to Eating Distress Association in 2010. To date I'm still there and still help them out and doing office work and out in schools talking to teenagers and this has given me a feeling of worthwhile doing something good. It gives me a buzz in my life and I think it's helped it in the family and you know at home as well. Uh, the confidence is built and I think I'm happier as a person. I still have setbacks but it's nice to know that you know through the setbacks I know now there's, there's light. I went back then to do uh, part-time counselling certificate. I got it and I took a big decision last year to go on and do my foundation degree in counselling. Just finished the first year of that and passed it and I got word I've got my placement for my second year with Care and Crisis in Lurgan and I'm delighted, absolutely delighted with that. So life has picked up. Anxiety and all comes back, back and forwards, but it's not managing me now. I might have dark days, but uh, you know, I, I get through it. I do workshops with uh, teenagers in uh, the secondary schools. They come out with some way out of things and you just home it in on them and it's good fun. The retail therapy, I uh, enjoy it. And I can do it on my own now. You know, I enjoy with company or I can go on my own, it's, it's nice. I have an 11 year old daughter and she likes the cinema. So I like to go there and just family holidays and things. I actually enjoy them now. My problems don't control me anymore. Uh, I can manage them most of the time. And that's my life. And uh, that's my way forward. Hi Ian, how's you? I'm grand, what about yourself Rory? Not too bad Ian, are you doing a bit of running? Yeah, I just thought it was such a nice evening, I thought I'd come out for a quick run. Why do you run Ian? I like running um, and I'm really quite good at it now, but it gives me a bit of space, gives me some time to myself. Do you find it running as part of your recovery? Oh yes, definitely. That sounds interesting, can you tell me a little bit more about it? I'm Ian Cardwell and I'm 
currently living in a small village in County Armagh called Donaclony, where I live with my wife. We've lived there for five years. I've been um, caring for her now for the best part of the seven years since we moved over here. Um, she suffers with various forms of mental health problems, the main ones being depression and panic attacks. It took me um, a few years to sort of appreciate how poorly my wife was getting. Um, and we decided that the best form of action was to do something positive. We found out about AWARE Defeat Depression and initially my role was to go along with Louisa's support, take her to the first couple and then leave her, you know, to meet other people suffering with mental health problems. As Louise's health was sort of deteriorating, I needed some support for myself and it was through uh, the AWARE group that I found out about a support group for carers called Cause. It was through going to Cause that I began to realise that it wasn't just about me and I shouldn't feel guilty the way Louise was feeling. It was more about making sure Louise was getting through the weekends. And as I was sort of putting all my energy into looking after Louise, I had to be more than just a carer. I had to be Ian the person. So I sort of tapped into my two main interests, gardening. I have allotment um, just outside the village and we would have a nice garden at home as well. So I'd be looking after things like that um, and going away for a couple of hours onto the allotment, you know, just to potter around, nice and peaceful, lots of bird song. I can sort of spend some time on my own and just sort of, just get away from it all almost. You know, if we're having a huge row in the house, I would walk away from a row and I would just put on my running gear and I would go out for a run. But it was an opportunity for me to vent, to churn things over in my mind, but equally to sort of put everything to bed and put everything behind me so that when I got back to the house, the arguments, the feelings had all gone and I could start afresh. And over time, you know, this has become my passion, you know, the running. I've done lots of things with my running over, over the last few years and I'm running marathons and half marathons. And it made Louise realise as well that whilst I was gaining my own identity, she needed to sort of almost pull herself away from being just this person who suffered with depression. And she would then start you know, just baking cakes for people's leaving parties and things like that. And people have begun to sort of comment and make really favorable suggestions to her in terms of, well, you should really go into business or you should be selling these cakes. And that would give her a real lift. It was a real positive thing for her. Um, so she sort of was putting that into a way of moving away from her depression. It was a way of her coming out of that, her baking, her creativity. Through the cause group, uh, we worked very closely with an organisation called Arts Care. We came up with the idea of turning an old duvet into a cloak. So we fashioned this item and then what we did was we would pin phrases and quotes and song lyrics and pictures all around maybe depression, caring, and things like that. And the idea behind a cloak was, if you wear it, it's a real comfort. And it was finally launched um, at the Bluestone Centre in Craigavon. Jill, who was the member from Artscare who looked after the project, she also used the cloak at the launch of the Artscare Annual Conference. We've got involved with different forums now for carers and users. With all this input as well from Louise, it's been a real help for her. Um, she set up her own small business where she's making, you know, bespoke cakes for people, jewellery, cards, that sort of thing. So that's going forward. There is hope there and, you know, you just take on the mantle of a carer and, you know, you can get through it and you can get to where you are now. Hello Alan, how's you? Hello Rory, nice to see you. Nice to see you too Alan. I see you've got a little cupboard business going here. I've been running over a year now. I suppose this has helped with your recovery. It has indeed so much. And when did your recovery begin Alan? Hello, my name's Alan. At the age of 19 I was a very outgoing chap, enjoyed life to the full. And I decided to wind down it and used to call in for a bottle of beer. But unfortunately, many persons heard this story. I got addicted to alcohol at the age of 38. Things came to a head. I was that far gone with my addiction that I decided to take my own life. I took a few overdoses. At that stage, unfortunately, I had lost my home, my family, 
my carpet job. So I basically ended up with the clothes on my back. 14 years I spent in and out of St. Luke's Hospital. So I've lost a lot of years in my life. I was referred to Dungannon Beacon Centre, which I had that many phobias about my head. I didn't want to go anywhere, basically. So as far as I'm concerned, the cycle was broke and basically I was going home and obviously I was seeing addiction counsellors taking things forward and her, my mum was starting to put a wee bit of a smile on her face which was good and you know I was getting positives at last. As my few years continued in Dungannon Beacon Centre, I came across a chap here, he says, would you like to join Armand Dungannon Mental Health Forum? So I went down to the forum and then I started to meet some new people. Then I was asked, Alan, would you like, there's another meeting you could go to if you wanted to, and it was called the User and Care Service Improvement Group. My most achievement out of that was I was voted in co-chair. Through all this peer advocacy and working with support and recovery and being in the care engagement group in Armagh, I went to Dungannon Beacon Centre and I thought about what they had done for me. I went to the manager here and I said, you know what I would love to do here? I would love to start a men's wellbeing group. And the manager looked at me and said, do you know something, Alan? I said, we would really would love. Saying I had maintained my advocate course and got my OCN, we call it the men's wellbeing group. I have 12 male adults in the group. They can share about men's things, obviously, and we have planned trips away. We have went to bowling, we have went to archery. I never thought I'd ever be back in the carpet business again, but I must admit it's a great experience to be back. I have a wee business now up and running over a year in Dungannon Enterprise Centre. Motivation is great. It's great to be back. It's something that I never thought I would achieve. And I really love my work. And the reason I really love my work, I am more in control of my life. And the money I'm now making, I'm not going to the bar stool anymore to spend it. I've got all my family back, I've got my kids back speaking to me. Every day is a different challenge. And that song, One Day at a Time, that's the way you take life. I know all one about the different pressures of this and that, but I'm so happy, I'm coping well, and I know my coping skills, and just life is good and it's great to be back. Hi Barbara, how's you? Okay Rory, I'm grand, how are you? I'm not too bad Barbara. Barbara, we're all involved in this recovery ethos within, within the Southern Trust. Can you tell me how you got involved in the RAP and this recovery? I will surely. Um, let me see, how did it start? I contacted uh, one of the nurses that used to nurse me in the hospital way years back and was asking her about the work she did and she started to explain rap to me and what it was. It's personal to everybody because you have your own rap. Your rap is not going to be the same as my rap, mm -hmm. you know. And a really great part of it that I enjoyed immensely was this here, actually making up a toolbox. Right, yeah. A wellness toolbox and basically this is things that if I'm not feeling too well, Rory, I can go back to. And I could say, well, you know, what will make me feel a wee bit better? or what do I need to do on a daily basis that will make me feel okay? And, you know, without a doubt, I would say one of the major things is uh, the medication. You know, because if I don't take this every day, I'm not going to start off from a wellness point anyway. And then, I don't know, I'm sure I've told you before about me having cats That's and a right, wee puppy. You have told me before, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you see them, they are just my one constant reason to get up in the morning, to get moving, to try, do you know what I mean? To have yeah. a wee bit of, it even builds your self-confidence just a bit, you know, that, that I'm able to take care of them. And then it's just very simple things, you know, and, and people probably don't give this a thought, but you see when I'm ill, um, I'd be so fatigued that even getting up to wash, is like an uphill battle. So I have this wee sponge duck and that reminds me that I have to get up every day and wash and see to my um, personal hygiene. Very simple things like that. And another, you know, massive, massive part of my life and support is my friends. And this is my wee uh, address book. 
you know, with all my friends' numbers and such, you know, I, I just don't know how I would survive without my friends. They're so good, you know. Like my wee pup, I don't know if I ever showed you a photograph of her, um, but she needs to be taken oh, out. Barbie, yeah. You know, she goes, and this is what the wee collar's about, mm -hmm. and that represents taking her out three times a day yeah. for a walk, you know. And a big, massive escape for me all my life was reading books. Absolutely love reading. I can escape. And um, actually, it's hard to believe, but since I've been thir I was 13, I would read five books a week. You know, religiously, I would just read them. And, um, you know, it's things like that. And then, of course, if I'm in real dark straits, I love to go and buy something, even if it's only online. <laughs> So I'll go and I'll buy a wee outfit for Millie the pup yeah. <laughs> or whatever or buy another book or download a book into the Kindle, something like that. And um, it's all these wee things that are personal to me but at times when I'm not so good or not feeling really good, you know, they're, they're a comfort. There are five key concepts within RAP and these are hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy and support and this is daily maintenance and what daily maintenance does is looks at what am I like when I'm well, things that I need to do every day to keep myself well and any optional extras and one of the things that I need to do every day to keep myself well is to not oversleep, to attend to personal hygiene Triggers are external to yourself. They happen outside of your control, but yet they can contribute to you becoming ill. Early warning signs are internal, and that means that they come from within you. And for me, that could be being weepy, crying, and then we come to when things are breaking down. And these are more signs that are probably evident to me, but also evident to everyone else around me. The last three parts that we have covered, they all have an action plan attached to them. And an action plan is something that is put in place to sort of counterbalance the warning signs, the triggers, and so on crisis planning. In this stage of your RAP, crisis planning is a part of your RAP that may be shared with others. And the reason for that is it's done when you're well. You're able to identify what works for you and what doesn't. So then, you know, you can put down people that you want to support you, people you don't want to be involved in your treatment and who is to take responsibility for care of pets, children, things that happen every day in your home. Post-crisis planning is also very important because this enables you to catch your breath and decide and evaluate what worked with my crisis plan and what didn't. Well, Barbara, that was brilliant information and I'll see you around, Barbara. All right, take bye. care now. Bye. bye. Lorna, how's you? Hello Rory, how are you? Are you heading for a game of golf? I am indeed, yes. Good for you. And how long have you been playing golf, Lorna? Oh, now, that should be about 35, 40 years, I'm sure now. Is that giving your age away, no, Lorna? No, don't you do any sums. <laughs> <laughs> and if you find that's helped with your recovery, Lorna? Well, I do find that um, it helps clear your mind for a while because you are focused very much uh, on playing golf and, and hitting the golf ball and maybe chatting with your playing partners and that. So when did your recovery begin, Lorna? Well, hello. Um, my name is Lorna Stewart and um, first of all, I would say I'm a wife, a mother and a um, hard worker. Now, in my life, uh, my family is important, and in fact, I believe this is where my problems began, uh, in that uh, during my uh, sec second pregnancy, um, I became extremely ill, so much so 
I admitted to hospital for a long time. At that time, I, I could feel myself um, dipping down, but had no realization uh, of how far I was going to dip after the baby was born. I had suicidal thoughts. I needed uh, expert assessment. In fact, I was admitted to the psychiatric hospital that evening. However, my new baby, Gordon, he stayed behind in the maternity hospital. Uh, understandably, I was quite distressed um, and for all sorts of reasons. Things gradually improved. A lot of medication was tried. Um, eventually, it was decided I may benefit from electroconvulsive therapy. In my um, estimation, that was the, the, the time of greatest change that I, something lifted. 2007, uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Initially, um, obviously, big shock. I went off from my first chemotherapy session and my mood went down and just couldn't cope. I had a, a daily visit from some people who tried to encourage me that we, we will get you better. With the passage of time and with my attendance at my local Beacon Centre, I started to feel better within myself. I gained some confidence. I am well recovered. I am enjoying my golf. I am enjoying my family. And um, the new friends now that I have met through the Mental Health Forum. I suppose another part of my involvement uh, with uh, mental health has been actually attending a training course on peer advocacy, which was held in my local Beacon Centre. I went along to the Service User and Care Improvement Group, not really uh, knowing what it entailed at the time. However, as well as um, um, acquiring a lot of knowledge about mental health issues and uh, how we work with our trust. Uh, we decided as a group to um, enter a, a competition and it was entitled actually Making a Difference and it was to highlight uh, the way that service users and carers can be more active in altering, changing mental health services for the better. And um, little did I know that um, a few of us out of the group were selected to go along uh, for a face-to-face -face interview. And uh, in fact, after that interview, we discovered that we had won our part of the competition. The, the winning award was to be presented in the Sleeve Donard Hotel in Newcastle. We got to meet chief executives and other uh, directors. We even got a bouquet of flowers and a box of chocolates. And uh, really it was good to meet people who did seem uh, interested in what we had been doing. There was an award this time put forward by our Health Trust, our Southern Health Trust, and they were called Excellence Awards. And uh, we decided again that we would present um, a, a little report uh, on how we felt the service was uh, improving. The group has managed to attain uh, second place in the partnership category. We all have to push ourselves forward, particularly if we want to make changes. My experience of my mental health problem is that I do live uh, day by day. I take small steps. I increase my uh, responsibilities. In fact, at, at the minute I'm responsible for uh, a group of young girls and, and mentoring them um, about learning how to play golf, teaching them the rules, showing them a few basic strokes. Life is really good and can be good if, if you go for it, just go for it and enjoy yourself. Hello, I'm Nora and you'll find me in any good restaurant. Hi, my name is Maria and I like walking to Cape Fit. Hello, I'm Doug. I am into motorbikes. The motorbikes keep me well. I go to the motorbike racing. I ride a Honda CB750, 20 year old, and that's what keeps me well. I'm Lawrence and I run marathons and I raise money for charity. And uh, I do walk on and I find that it helps the mental health. Hi, I'm Patricia and I enjoy my grandchildren coming round and I also enjoy going to the forum. 
Hello, my name's Stephen and I like to travel a lot. I've been on a Mediterranean cruise this summer and this helps me uh, feel better about myself. Hello, my name's Wendy and I like to swim in my local leisure centre. I also know that swimming is also really good for my physical health, so that helps too. Uh, my name's Kenny and I'm getting married to Anne and it's just great to be a part of this uh, whole surroundings here and I think by keeping me well, salmon fishing and getting out in the outdoors, not staying in the house and being part of an organisation like this and my faith in God and Anne has great faith in God too and that keeps me well. Hello, my name's Jim. Uh, I trouble to stop smoking. Trust come in there and they give me an whole lot of backing. They help me a lot. They've got me off of cigarettes. And by the way, I'm an actor on TV and films. I'm actually working on Game of Thrones at the moment. I've finished Your Highness, Mo Molan's story, lots of other ones. Hi, I'm Betty. I just love to get outside and I love my gardening. It really relaxes me. Hello, I'm Conla and I enjoy surfing the net. I'm Brent and I'm getting um, the grips of mobile technology, using it for texting with my friends. Hi, I'm Mark. I like socialising, having a coffee with friends and family and sport. Hi, my name is Rory McKeegan. Um, I used to do a bit of gardening at Tanamo Gardens here. Um, I was like getting involved in social activities, uh, like any form of personal development. My name is Francis, I'm a member of the Bamford Monitoring Group, the Mental Health Users Forums and the Beating the Blues subgroup. Apart from that, I'm happily retired with my wife. We enjoy doing gardening, uh, going for day trips here and there and taking life easy apart from that. I'm Austin, I enjoy talking to other service users about mental health, that's why I'm in the forum. Hello, my name's Peter. Uh, I got involved with uh, the advocacy course about two years ago. One of the things about it, uh, it's, you will have to drive again, travel to see people. So I took my driving test much to my wife's delight. I advise anyone, no matter what way you feel at the moment, try the course. Now you've heard my friend's story of recovery, but just one more thing. Come on, follow me. Well, you've heard from a few of my friends in the Mental Health Fora and got an idea of recovery. But maybe I should tell you about my recovery journey. I have had my own mental health difficulties going back 20 years. I have been in hospital and in and out of employment. I've gone to voluntary groups like Action Mental Health and Mindwise, where I did some courses. They helped me increase my confidence, get out of the house, meet other people. This has been the stepping stone to making the most of my life. I became a member of Craig Avon and Bambridge Mental Health Forum, where I met people in similar situations to me. This is a real support and I met new friends. At these monthly meetings, information is shared about services and opportunities for involvement. Everyone is encouraged to put forward their views. We always have a cup of tea, a bit of crack and the Christmas party is not to be missed, believe me. I gave up smoking three years ago. I now help others who are trying to quit. I am a volunteer within the Trust. By being a volunteer, I feel I get a lot out of it too. I've also done my two-day RAP training and hope to be a peer advocate with Northern Ireland Association for Mental Health. I'm currently a trained walk leader and cycle leader and I take groups out and about in the fresh air. Because getting out and about is part of my daily routine and important for my wellness. I have a twin brother called Leon who is physically disabled. I enjoy spending time with him. We have this special twin bond which is part of my recovery. In fact, we keep each other well. I enjoy chilling out to music, going on holiday with family and friends, going out for dinner and having a wee drink. All these things I have shared with you make me who I am, my identity. It's my life, my way forward.